Hey, what's up, Ram Nation? This is Ryan Keating, Sports Information Director for Texas Wesleyan, here for another edition of Ramsports.net Ram Talk. Alongside me is my assistant, Cameron Irvine, and today we are going to be talking to head coach of wrestling, Ray Bedford. Ray comes to Texas Wesleyan with extensive experience in coaching, mentoring, and leading both men's and women's wrestling programs. He is the founder of uh, Spartan Mat Club, one of the largest elite high school clubs in Texas, specializing in preparing high school athletes for national and international wrestling programs. Since Spartan Mat Club's founding in 2016, Ray has helped place more than 90 wrestlers in the state tournament. The club boasts 12 champions and 44 placings, with more than 25 wrestlers in college programs throughout the United States. During his time, he has also coached with the Texas men's and women's cadet and junior national dual teams, the Fargo National Championship teams, and has been asked to be the assistant coach on the cadet Pan Am team for 2019. Uh, he comes from Plano Senior High School, where he was the head wrestling coach there, and we're glad to have him here with us today. Ray, how's it going? It's going good. It's going good. It's a little boring. <laughs> right, right. I'm sure, uh, you know, I, I have to admit I, I hadn't been to a wrestling meet until you hosted one here in the Sid Richardson Center at Texas Wesleyan. And I have to say, one of one of the most exciting experiences uh, I've ever had. I mean, to those that don't know, wrestling wrestling can be super exciting, especially when you're watching it in person. And um, I, I was a fan, an instant fan, right from the start. So um, we're glad that uh, Texas Wesleyan has brought uh, wrestling here, and we're glad that because of Texas Wesleyan wrestling, you're here. Um, so thank you for, for being a part of this um, program. <clears throat> oh man, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I couldn't be, couldn't be in a better place for me. Great, great, great. And I, so we were talking a little bit about recruiting uh, off air. Let's get into that real quick. What what do you think are the differences between um, recruiting a wrestler compared to recruiting any other student athlete? I don't I don't think there I don't think there's a lot of difference, right? I mean, you know, you're talking about you know a specific sport for a specific type of athlete. You know, um, typically the, the the issue with wrestlers is you know there are uh, there's a lot of, you know, wrestlers has the lowest percentage of high school athletes that transition to college. One of the lowest, one of the lowest percentages. Because, um, you know, there's not, a, there's not as many football, there's not as many wrestling programs as there are football programs or basketball programs, right? Um, and uh, so, you know, you get, well, you end up getting, a, I mean, I, I personally think, you know, I end up getting, I get to really, really recruit scholar athletes, Right. Um, you know, if, if they're you know, all things being equal, you know, if, if a couple of kids are equal physically, um, typically you, you get, you're going to have the option to choose the kid that's, you know, going to benefit the program on an academic side. Um, I'm a big, you know, uh, the, the academic side of the game, you know, becoming a student athlete is really, really big. My, my main goal for the, I mean, we all know there's no professional wrestling, I mean, you know, when it comes to the kind of wrestling you know, that we actually do. I mean, right. there, there is some, there's a few kids uh, on the team currently that are going to be coming onto the team next year and the next year after that, the next couple of three years, who uh, I've coached over the years um, that, you know, they're Olympic hopeful in Greco and in women's freestyle, um, especially now that the Olympics has moved, moved out, you know, Summer Olympics has moved out another year. The, uh, the age qualification changes for a couple of those kids and allows them to be able to, you know, qualify and compete. Um, but, you know, for the most part, you know, we're trying to prepare them for life, life after, you know, life after wrestling. Yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, apart from the academic side, what type of culture do you try to build in, in, in your program? Well, I mean, you know, I'm a kind of a old school, hard nosed kind of guy. Um, the, the culture that we have really is based on 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 three three categories, hustle, effort, attitude. Um, those three things, 
they, they play into everything you do in your life. If you apply those three things to every single thing that you do, there's no way that you can't be successful. Um, and, I, you know, we check, we check the kids. We check each other as coaches uh, all the time on, the, on that, you know, during the course of a day or during a week or, you know, even, even during the course of a tournament, you know. Have, what are you given? Have you give, are you given all of those things? Uh, and that, that's really, you know, that's really what we, we – that's our mission statement, you know, so to speak. Yeah, so one thing that that I think not a lot of people think of when when they think of wrestling, I guess the casual fan doesn't think of is is just how big it was for Texas Wesleyan to start uh, a wrestling program in the state of Texas. Talk about how big uh, how big that was for you and, and for the sport of wrestling. Well, I mean, you know, so for me, it was it was the real the real driver behind me even applying and going through the process to, uh, you know, to attempt to, to get this job because from a historical standpoint within the sport, I mean, it's massive, right? You know, this is the biggest state in the, in the country. I think we have the second first or second most wrestlers of, of any state, you know, at the scholastic wow. level. Um, and, and to not have a, we, I mean, there's no D1 programs, never has been, um, you know, to not have, you know, a major, you know, being a major player in the Big 12 like we used to be and, and you know, and all that stuff. You'd think that at some point it would have happened. It just never did. Um, Wayland Baptist, they were a club team for a long time. I, 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 I'd be guessing, I think, 10 years, I think, before they decided to become, you know, take a run at, you know, being a, a, a competitor, a conference competitor. But we are the first first program in the history of the state to start as a as a divisional competitor um it's huge and you know in in dfw it's huge uh you know we have a huge fan following you know right off the bat just just because we were here i mean we had a team full of freshmen on both the men's and women's side and and we still had a huge fan following so i mean we haven't even really begun to define ourselves so to speak um but you know, I'm I'm really really happy with uh, with the way things are going. You know, we've got some we've got some donors, uh, we've got some great you know local backing. We have our own booster club that's run by alumni, um, so uh, it's going good so far. It's great, Coach. Uh, wrestling is known to have its own sort of world, its own culture, its own lifestyle, its own. I mean, just just everything. It's really fascinating. And to piggyback off of what Ryan said about uh, about going to a wrestling match and, and, and seeing these athletes, you get sucked into those three minutes and nothing else matters. And I'm sure as a coach and as athletes, that's exactly what it feels like. Can you describe to people who maybe aren't in this world what it's like to be in this world and, and, and how engaging the sport can be? Yeah, I mean, so like you know, you kind of said it. You know, you know, at the college level, you know, the guys, the guys are wrestling seven minutes. You know, if, if the match goes seven minutes, um, you know, three periods. The girls wrestle uh, two three minute periods for freestyle, right? International rules. Um, but I don't think anybody takes into consideration, you know, like for like for a dual meet, right? That was that was one dual meet that week, and some of those kids might have wrestled, you know, three four minutes. But so that, you know, if we're talking about that specific one that Ryan, the Ryan, the first one that Ryan attended, that try me, uh, interstate try me that we had, um, those kids had been working toward that, toward that match since the middle of August. Wow. Okay. So we're talking about uh, strength and conditioning. We're talking about, um, you know, work on the mat. You know, these kids, these kids practice 11 times a week. Uh, when we're not traveling, right? So they, they practice, you know, you know, we're practicing two days, Monday through Thursday, a morning practice on Friday, a mid morning practice on Saturday and an afternoon practice on Sunday. Okay. Wow. Uh, that's when we're not traveling. So, I mean, they're, they're talking about putting in time. Um, you know, these kids, wrestlers probably put more time into training for a moment than, than any other sport. Yeah, and that, and you can see the, you know, the the intensity come out in those in those moments. Coach, wrestling and and football have always had a pretty special relationship in terms of how 
uh, how developing skills, uh, you know, that can be beneficial for both sports uh, sort of come together. How, how is that? Uh, how is that relationship, and and how does wrestling mold football, and and maybe vice versa? Um, I mean, you know, I, from my perspective, it started you know, like for me that that connection started when I was in high school. Uh, my high school football coach, basically, it was a it was a requirement for your defensive lineman, your offensive lineman, and linebackers to participate in the wrestling program off season. Um, conditioning, right? But it's learning how to hand fight, right? I mean, that's that's you know, learning leverage. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, I'll tell you right now, wrestling made me a better football player for sure. Um, and, you know, it was evidenced in the draft. I think six of the seven first linemen that were taken were all former wrestlers, state level, state champ level wrestlers. Wow. Uh, you know, the, some of the best, some of the best football, I mean, you can take Stephen Neal, for example. Stephen Neal was a national champ, gold medalist, Never played football, but ended up playing in the NFL, you know, for a number of years with the with the New England Patriots, as, you know, as a lineman. So um, there's a huge transition there, right? And you know, there's it's it's kind of a you know it's kind of a violence for violence kind of sport. There's hand fighting, and, and uh, there's, there's a lot of crossover. You know, it's a lot of crossover, especially in those those positions where you know you use your hands a lot. How would you summarize your first season as uh, Texas Wesleyan's wrestling program coach? Uh, there was, it was, a it was a whirlwind. Um, there was, there were highs and lows. There were, I mean, really big highs considering it was a first year program, but how, how would you put a bow on it? Man, you know, I, I am, we, you know, as a, as a coach and, you know, my assistant coach, Jared, um, we, I mean, we're super, I mean, we can't be more, more happy. Um, you know, it took, it took a little while for those kids, you know, some of those kids kind of understand what college wrestling is all about and, and the kind of work that it takes. And then the, once they started to buy into the program and how things work, we really started to see some things turn up. I mean, our girls team was ranked in the top 20 almost the entire season. Um, we had seven girls ranked in the top 20 individually almost the entire season. Uh, we had one young lady ranked as high as seventh in the country. Um, on the men's side, you know, we finished just out of the top 20 in votes at the end of the season there. Um, you know, we rolled out of the season getting seventh at the OCU Open, which is a huge, you know, that's a huge open tournament. And for us to do that well off the off the jump was, was pretty impressive for us. Um, and then we followed that up by, you know, uh, just one, one point out of the top 10 at Kearney, which is another big tournament. Um, you know, we were in the top 15 at Missouri Valley, which is the biggest NAIA tournament in the country outside of nationals. Uh, and we had some great, you know, great performances individually um, from some, you know, Drake McKee winning, you know, winning the conference championship. You know, we were only had, our, our uh, conference only had one allocation at, at 65 for the finals. Um, he had to win it to make it to nationals, and he did. Uh, Kobe, wow. Nelms, Kobe Nelms the entire season um, was ranked um and he was ranked as high as number eight i think uh and, and that kid that kid has just done nothing but work he is he is the the quintessential workhorse uh on a daily basis never complains never shucks anything just gets in there and gets after it every single day and it and it played out for him really well this year you know but i mean but wrestling in college comes down to a couple things you know when you're a freshman you know 17 18 year old kid and you're in the national, you're on the nationals, you're in these big tournaments, and you're wrestling 23, 24, 25 year old, you know, fifth year seniors. Um, there's a big difference between a kid wrestling a grown man. Uh, and you know, Jared and I just kept saying to each other, we can't wait to see these guys wrestle when they're all grown up. You know, so as we start to move through these seasons, I think we're going to see some real development from some of those kids that you know, it's going to it's going to keep them on that national in that national spotlight. And the that same, is same with the ladies. No, same with the ladies. And you know, we got all freshman girls, you know, wrestling, you know, 23, 24-year-old, 25-year-old girls. We have some ladies that we wrestle against that are former military that are, you know, in their late 20s, wow. you know. So um, there's, you know, there was some really, really great stuff. Not as many lows. I mean, obviously the low, you know, the women's nationals being canceled while we're there, you know, pre prepping to, you know, get on the mat and start, start doing the weigh-in process and they cancel the tournament. 
Wow. That was, that was, that was horrible. Um, you know, and for us to, you know, have five girls there, that was great. You know, and those same, you know, those same five girls, um, all American at, at women's, uh, at the WCWA's women's nationals in Georgia. So we had some really, really great stuff this year and, uh, we're looking forward to building on it. Um, but you know, as a first year coach with a first year program with a bunch of first year kids, I think they showed themselves really well. Yeah, Drake McKee, uh, as you mentioned, won the KCAC and SAC combined uh, conference uh, championship at his weight division. Uh, same for Madison Brown. She won the 101-pound weight division for the uh, conference championship. And um, four more women's uh, wrestlers qualified for nationals, as well as uh, Kobe Nelms on the mid side. Both of those moments were in our top uh, 16 moments of the year, and they both made the final four um, with uh, Drake McKee and the men's team winning the, the bracket that we had on, on Twitter. So, congratulations to Drake. I'm sure he's very happy with that. Um, yeah, yeah, he, he definitely was. You know, we, we kept a little spotlight on it. We have weekly Zoom meetings, um, just kind of keep everybody up to date and kind of try to keep everybody honest. And, uh, yeah, they, that was a big topic of discussion during those calls. <laughs> well, good. We're glad we glad we were able to put it on for you guys, um, Coach. Let's talk. This is something that that fascinates me. Let's talk about cutting weight or making weight um, in the in the college at the college level. Uh, just talk about all that goes into that. I I would love to hear it. Well, so so generally, I'm not a big big weight cut guy. Um, but to be competitive for some, for some individuals, it's, it's a, it's a, ne it's a necessity. Uh, okay. so typically what, you know, what I, what I do is I'll, I'll let, I'll let the individual athletes tell me what weight class they want to wrestle in. And we'll start the season based on that. We may have, we may sit down and have a couple discussions about, you know, competitiveness or, um, you know, body fat percentage or health, just, you know, basic, you know, the basic discussion about you know, where, I think they should be versus where they want to be, um, because some kids some kids think that they got to cut four, five, six weight classes to be competitive, and it's just not the case. And it's just you know something that they've learned, you know, over the years in high school, and, and you know, and it's worked out for them. Um, but typically, that's because the competition isn't always the stiffest. You know what I mean? Uh, so you know the way it works in college is you have to certify your weight by a date. There's a certain date that they have to certify, right? Which is they have to weigh in, okay? And then they have to um, uh, provide a urine sample which measures their hydration level at that weigh-in, okay? So they have to pass the hydration test and, and the body fat percentage test and then the weight, okay? Um, and there's a minimum body fat percentage that they can't go below, you know, and the hydration has to be at a certain level um, and, then, and then their weight. And then typically what happens with their weight, what's provided to you via uh, track wrestling, who everybody uses for the weight management program um, from NCAA, you know, Division One to NAIA, uh, it, it calculates for you by day from the day they weigh in till the end of school what that, what that level is. And, and on average, depending on the person's weight, but on average, it's about a pound and a half a week you can lose. Or, or, or one and a half percent, you know, it's just, just depending on the, depending on the person. Um, and so if they weigh in, uh, let's say they weigh in, let's say I'll just use a, a hundred pound, a hundred pounds and they weigh in at a hundred pounds and that's their, and their minimum weight is uh, I'll use a different one, 133 and their minimum weight is 124. That means that person can cut to, to 125, but they can't do it within a week. Right, they they can only lose so much, so they may have to wrestle 133 at 126, right? Because they can't. But if they reset that weight at a higher weight, then it starts over at that higher weight, right? Hmm. So you can't. There's not a lot of you can't go a lot of up and down, right? You've got to kind of stay steady. So as an example, Kobe Nelms, you know, he's a kid who walks around at about 138, 140 at the most. Um, so him wrestling 133, that's what he wanted to wrestle. He could have, you know, his minimum weight would have allowed him to wrestle 125. Um, but he, uh, I mean, that's where he wanted to wrestle and he did great. Um, yeah. John, John Geiger, our other 133 who made, who, who, uh, just missed making nationals at, 
that conference conference championship. Um, John really wanted to wrestle 125, but based on his and look, based on his poor judgment for weight certification, he missed the minimum weight by 0.4. So he was 125.4 minimum weight. So that means he couldn't weigh, he couldn't wrestle at 125 the entire season, whether he lost the weight or not. So he's got to, if he wants to wrestle 125 this year, he's got to be a little more conscious of, you know, where he weighs in initially to be able to calculate to that 125 weight. And then Zane Miller, you know, Zane Miller showed up um, in August, in early August for just for like our conditioning program. Um, at 308 pounds, uh, he wrestled heavyweight for us. He wrestled 220 for us, and he wrestled 197. Zane lost over 100 pounds between August and and conference championship. Wow! Following wow. that, you know that weight descent, that descent program. So, um, you know, there's there's some good stuff that comes out of that, and some of it's difficult. Some kids try to cut too much. Uh, and that's a big, that's probably one of my biggest pet peeves. When you say, I'm going to, this is what I'm going to wrestle. I'm going to cut to this. And then you don't make weight. It's a big no, no. Right. Cause it, it just, it, especially when it comes to duels, it can really, really mess up your planning, especially, you know, we weren't that deep this first year. So right. it wasn't like I could just go to the next guy in some cases. There, it's so complex. And, and I imagine, you know, it's just another one of those factors you, you have to, you have to um, make sure that you're doing good in school. You also have to practice well, but now you have to eat well, and you have to make sure that, that day by day you're hitting these marks. Um, so a lot of respect for, for wrestlers and the student athletes that, that have to, um, you know, put in that some cases, In some it. cases, those kids are checking weight. We're checking weight at, you know, at the end of practice every single day. Yeah. You it's should take that money. weight descent program nationally. What's that? <laughs> you should take that weight descent program nationally. Yeah, you know, they really should. The problem is is that the work is so darn hard. Nobody wants to, you know. And, and right. you know, and, and, and in reality, you know, the, those kids' weights fluctuate a lot, you know, because of hydration. You know, that, that, that room that we wrestle in, in my facility there, um, in the wintertime with the heaters on is, you know, an eight, seven-pound room over an hour and a half. Um, in the summertime, in that room, it can get up to, you know, nine, ten pounds. Some of those kids are losing per practice. Um, wow. You know, and, and so eight pounds is a gallon of water. Yeah. Person, right. So, I mean, these kids, these kids super hydrate. We really, we really focus on super hydrating all the time and not trying to cut water, um, which you'll find a lot of weight cutting revolves around cutting water weight at the last minute. Um, we really, really try to minimize that, that water weight cut uh, as much as possible. Right. Making weight in a healthy way, right? Exactly, exactly, because it only benefits you on the mat. Trying to recover, you know, at the college level, you get, you get a, uh, in a, before a tournament, you get two hours after weigh-ins before it starts, and for a duel, you get one hour. Um, you, the, the ability to recover from a, from a severe weight cut in an hour or, or two hours is nearly impossible. There are guys that can do it. Trust me, there are guys that can do it, but, uh, you know, it's, it's tough. Those, you know, it's tough. They're, those are rare individuals that can do that. You know, we've got Don Doyle on the team. He's a he's a UFC fighter, um, and uh, Don Don had a you know he had a hard time with that weight cut. He he cuts like a fighter, right? He'll cut 15 pounds the night before, but they have they have they have nighttime weigh-ins, and then they have 24 hours to recover. You know, before that fight, right? They always weigh in the night before. So getting him to kind of change you know change modes. Um, was a little difficult, but once he got it, it was much easier for him. Coach, talk a little bit about uh, your recruiting process, how that's going, and what what competitive advantage that you do, do you use uh, for for recruits coming in? Like, what sets them over the top, saying, "Oh yeah, this Texas Wesleyan is school for me." Well, I mean, obviously, it's a, it's a little different atmosphere of recruiting um, right now, right? We can't travel, we can't go see kids. So we're really relying a lot on, you know, video recruiting sites, you know, where kids post video, YouTube, um, kids sending you video, uh, uh, and, and you and you, you rely on contacts like guys that have maybe have seen that kid wrestle or know something about that kid. Y'all call other coaches in California that I know, or you know, with Jared being you know having such good connections in Colorado, 
um, and, and some and some in the back in back east, you know, with guys that he's wrestled with before. So you play, you, you really do play the the networking game, try to, to try to nail stuff down. Um, this season versus last season. So last season I got the job in February, so I kind of shortened that recruiting season, right? So I, I went after kids that uh, I knew, right? Kids that I coached on national teams um, and kids that that I knew were competitors. Uh, this year's a different story. I, mean, I only had one walk on last year, you know, and just it, just in the one year cycle of us having a program, that walk on number has gone from one to four. Wow. You know, so their kids that have applied, been accepted, are getting enrolled um, that I've never seen wrestle. So when, when I got that, when I, I get we get a spreadsheet from, from admission. Uh, and when I first saw it, I thought it was a mistake. I thought maybe uh, Steve had put a bunch of guys on there from football or something. And they no, they were all wrestling kids. So what I would do in the evening is I would take pick three or four names. And I'd go on track wrestling and try to look them up. I'd go on, you know, try to watch them wrestle a little bit, try to figure out who they were. Um, and there's some there's some talented kids that are just coming to walk on. Um, as far as as far as recruiting, recruiting, it's been kind of a mixed bag. There were a couple of kids that I went after really early in December. Um, kids that were, you know, that I knew that I that I wanted in this program, um, and I was able to lock those down. Uh, you know, Camille Fournier, probably the number one women's recruit at any weight this year uh you know she was ranked i think at, the, at one point number two in the world um and and number number three or number two in the country and number four in the world um at that, that you know that 119 weight class and uh we were able to we were able to get her um you know she wants to be a chiropractor so you know our program blends right in she can just run right to parker after she's done and and uh i'm pretty excited about that when i've known that kid you know since she was a little girl um, so it's kind of a, that's one of the good things. It's like some of these kids I've, I've coached or I've been around for a long time. So seeing them move from, from scholastic into the college is, is, you know, into the, into the ranks of the college wrestling is, is pretty fun. Um, so I had a couple other kids. I've got some really, really fantastic, uh, junior college transfers, um, that I didn't get last year. Uh, but just having the program out there and us traveling all over the country to wrestle and you know, all the way to Reno. Uh, for the TOC, we were only one of two NAIA teams to compete in that tournament. The rest were D1s and D2s. Uh, we, uh, you know, our name got out there. You know, there, there was, you know, there's, there's a little bit of, there was a little bit of heat behind that. And, and in reality, I think it probably made this recruit, this recruit season, um, a little easier for me. I mean, there, there's a number, there's a number of, of great athletes that we've signed that, that came to us. Wow. And I got the email from them saying, hey, Coach, I heard about your program. I watched you guys. You know, I'd really like to know how I can become part of that. Um, so that's that's been a, r a real, real surprise on both the men's and the women's side. Um, I've got, you know, I've got half a dozen junior commits for next year that are already done. Um, so, you know, it's, it's kind of weird. Like, you know, last year I had to get a team together. This year I'm trying to kind of fill that, fill that out. Right. I mean, I didn't have any big guys. I, I, I didn't have a heavyweight for most of the season last year. Now I've got five. That's you know, awesome. so, you know, I've got, you know, I've got 14 signees from once you know, from 165 to heavyweight. Those are guys I didn't have last year. You know, and these are all these are all really, really legit athletes. Um, now, and I formed some of those guys out to the football team. So we're, we're sharing some we're sharing some athletes now. Um, and that's something that I, you know, I hope. You know, hope we can continue. I think it helps. I'm, I'm a two sport guy. I love the fact that these guys play two sports. Uh, so I think that's going to be that's going to be fun. You know, having those guys on the football team and then coming over to the wrestling team. Um, and hopefully, maybe you know, maybe we drag a couple couple other football players. You know, maybe used to wrestle. You know, out after football season is done. You know, instead of just hanging out. Um, some some exciting things happening there on the recruiting side, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, you know, I've got hopefully I can set it up so we're next year. I can only I just have to go after some specific athletes that I really want. And I don't have to try to field, you know, I was a little concerned that, you know, after last year, it was, how it was going to be, you know, with so many new women's programs opening up and, and adding to that competition. Um, I think it were 11 or 12 new women's programs just this year. Uh, but I'm finding 
you know, and it may, like I said, we were talking earlier, it might be a little bit of a benefit from what's going on, you know, geopolitically, you know, we've got, we, we have kids and families who maybe want their kids to stay a little bit closer to home. Right. And I think I'm forming some of that talent because of that. And conversely, I think in those other states where I'm getting, you know, top quality wrestlers from wrestling country, um, because a lot of that talent is staying home and filling out rosters where they would normally go and they're having to look outside to try to find, find a home. Um, and then, you know, and, and then, you know, us being in Fort Worth does not hurt us. I mean, that's probably one of my biggest selling points is, you know, if it comes down to, you know, us and somebody else, you know, a 3000, you know, a town with a population of 3000 in the middle of nowhere, that's six hours from the nearest shopping mall. I mean, is that still a thing? I don't even know if that's still a thing. I'm so old. Right. Um, it, it's, it's a huge difference. I mean, you know, I've got kids from rural that are trying to come and, and be a little more, a little more urban. You know, and the transition from some of those kids like from California that are coming, it's not, you know, they're not moving, you know, to a dust bowl. They're not moving to a little farm town. Right. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, I'm a farm ranch kid. Uh, <laughs> and that's how I grew up. And, if, you know, if, my, if I didn't end up going to a real small school in the middle of nowhere, I would have been fine with it. But I think some of these kids want a little bit different experience. And I think that plays into it a lot. You talked about your uh, assistant coach, Jared. Talk, talk a little bit about his personalities and his strongest traits and what he brings to the table. Jared, Jared Haberman, um, he is, well, he's probably, I mean, he's, he's just one of my favorite people in the whole world. Um, and, and us having the ability to, you know, he coached a club. I coached a club. We had some crossover with some, some really, really, really good wrestlers, some really, really, you know, internationally, uh, astute wrestlers, the Decker twins, you know, who are both going to Duke next year. Um, you know, we, we've shared and we just never could like get together and, you know, try to, and it just kind of so happened. Um, but the, the original assistant coach I hired just didn't work out. Um, and I had to let him go after a couple of weeks. And I was just like, you know, I'm just going to do it myself. And Jared called me out of the blue and said, Hey man, I'd love to volunteer to help. And I said, volunteer, you want a job? And he's like, sure. You know, he's a full-time, <laughs> he's a full-time VP at Fidelity. I mean, he's, you know, he's got a career, but, wow. uh, you know, he's, we're talking about a guy who's a four-time Colorado state champ. I, I think, I don't think he got taken down his entire high school career i mean this kid this guy wow. um had a lot of offers to go to a lot of big schools decided to stay home and wrestle at western colorado uh, as a four-time all-american two-time finalist um and he is he is by far the best technician i've been with in the room he uh, i'm gonna i'm you know i'm not gonna put it lightly he is a big part of the success that our kids had this year um, and he is completely insane when it comes to, you know, when it comes to practice, the guy is just, is just a big ball of energy. Uh, he never stops going. Um, he probably wrestles during, a, during a normal practice. He probably wrestles 15, 20 matches a, a day. Um, cause he just never stops. Um, the kids love wrestling with him. Um, and, and he is, he is, uh, He's a force to be reckoned with, man. I mean, uh, he's going to win that assistant coach of the year here pretty soon. I mean, he's he's the real deal. I'm super, super, super lucky to have him. Coach, I, I have like, sounds like a great asset to have. Man, you have no idea. And, the, and then the, the recruiting aspect of it, right, it just opens up. I have nothing in Colorado, and it opened up that whole state, you know, to us, you know, for, for the ability to recruit and compete. To be able to go and set up duels with some of those schools in Colorado is, is huge for us. Coach, I have to ask. There's so you're you're so passionate about the sport and your job and what you do. Like it's apparent. It is is absolutely apparent. This is a one word answer. Is there anything to coach Bedford other than wrestling? Yes or no? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. I mean, you know, I, I think it's it's really taken. It really takes. You know, I mean, I when I'm not coaching the college team, I'm coaching club coaching high school kids. Um, and then uh, typically this time of year, I'm getting ready for, uh, I mean, we would have taken the college kids to the U S open and some of the bigger international tournaments, um, getting ready for cadet nationals in, uh, in Illinois, junior nationals in, in, uh, uh junior uh, duels in, in Tulsa. And then, and then Fargo here in, in, in July. Um, I usually take off about a week during Christmas break. You know, if I'm not running, if we're not running a camp or something, and that week between Fargo, when Fargo ends at the end of July 
and that 10th, you know, the 10th or 11th of August where we get started on preseason. So I, I, I really, really try to keep my hands in it. I mean, I think it, you know, as I get older, I think it keeps me younger. Um, I just, I love it. My wife's a wrestling junkie. My, you know, my son wrestles. So, you know, we got our hands in the, from the youth side all the way to the college side now, and it keeps you busy. So you, I love you say, I do. did you wrestle in, in high awesome. school and played, you played two sports, right? I actually played, I mean, I was, you know, wrestling, football, baseball. I mean, my okay. old man, the, the deal with my old man was I didn't have to go and get an outside job as long as I was playing sports. <laughs> so I just made sure that I stayed real busy. I, I had enough work on the ranch, right? You know, so yeah. I didn't want to have to go and get a job at the gas station, you know, or whatever. So I, you know, I played, I played all three. So what's your, you have a favorite memory from your playing days? Oh, I, you know, I mean, from, from, from high school, man, that's a long time ago. I'm old. Um, <laughs> I think, I think most of my fondest memories about sports in high school are probably baseball. Um, we had a great bunch of guys. Uh, I was just back, not last year, but the year before in the fall for a hall of fame election for, you know, for our coach and for that team. Um, in my senior year, we had, you know, I think almost every guy in that team was all league and all Metro. And then we, we were just, yeah, we were a bunch of guys that played together growing up. And, and, uh, it was, that was probably some of my best, best memories. Um, you know, football was great. You know, we were kind of a, you know, kind of a little powerhouse, at, you know, in football, but wrestling, the wrestling program at that school, you know, had been a, at, even at the time I was there, had been a 15 or 16 year, you know, nationally ranked team. Um, you know, always call, always, you know, vying for that state title in California, which, as you guys probably know, you know, here we have we have three divisions, right? 6A, 5A, and prep, right? Nebraska has seven divisions. Wow. Oklahoma, I think, has three or four. California has one state. I don't care if you're prep, whatever A, it doesn't matter. Whatever level you are, there's one state. So wow. it's, it's a whole different animal, California. Coach, uh, what is um... – we we talked about making weight earlier. What's your guilty pleasure? Do you have a do you have some type of food that you just you, you can't resist? Sometimes you have to cheat. Man, you know, I, I don't really. I mean, so you know, my wife's a, a nutritionist, and and so we do a lot of meal prep, um, and we haven't really gotten away from that too much during the you know during the lockdown. Um, but you know, I mean, I'll, I like to throw down a cheeseburger every now and then, or you know, uh, I'm a, I'm a big steak guy, you know. We do cook a lot, and you know, but uh, I mean, if I had to choose one thing, you know, good steak, probably one that I made. You know, I just I'm kind of picky. <laughs> I am picky about some kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, no, that's probably my that's probably my uh, my go to. Just a good talk- nice chunk of red meat. <laughs> you talk about your wife. Um, fill in the blank. Your partner is much more blank than you are. Understanding. <laughs> Yeah, no, she's she's a real. I mean, obviously, she'd have to be to be married to me for for this long, right? I think we've been married seventeen years this year, um, and you know, she's a big part of the program. She actually does the strength and conditioning, volunteers for the strength and conditioning for the women's team, wow. um, and she provides all of the meal plans and nutrition programs for all the kids that are cutting and trying to you know meet that weight cut program. Um, so you know, they, we do a little bit of a little bit of extra stuff, uh, and she's really really involved. Um, and always has been, you know, since, you know, since we started the club, uh, we've done that stuff for kids, you know, over the years. And, and so we've just kind of transitioned it into, you know, how I run this program, you know, she's there, you know, we own the gym where the team trains, uh, um, and you know, it's, it's been good. I mean, we spend a lot of time together, but I mean, we, we, we feed off each other pretty well. I think it works out pretty good and, and the kids love her. Right. So, I mean, she's literally the team mom, um, and I think that's good for them to have. I mean, some of those kids, some of those girls will call her um, about things that, you know, I may not I may not be the best at. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it, it, it's good. You know, she's she's a real rock. All right, Coach, last question. Um, we've been asking some of the other coaches um, who would be their quarantine three. So you have three people to pick within the texas wesleyan faculty or staff who, who are you picking oh man so am i am i one of the three or is it three yeah. others so three others besides you so four total besides in the house me. um oh i don't know uh 
I would go. I, I mean, I mean, I'd go Ricky, you know, because you know Ricky. Ricky makes me laugh. Kevin, Kevin, you know, keeps me. You know, keeps he's he keeps it pretty light too. Um, who else? I have to go with men's soccer. I mean, he's a great dude, man. Yeah, that guy. That guy's like he he should be a stand-up comedian. Cool sweeter, yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, huh? Do you mean men's soccer or women's soccer? Josh Gibbs or Cole Sweetser? With Josh, man. Josh is yeah. crazy. Yeah, no, I love yeah. Josh. Yeah, those would, be my, those would be my three. All right. Special stuff when we get back rolling, so. Great, great. Well, Coach, it was awesome to talk to you today. We appreciate you taking the time. Uh, it was great, guys. Yeah, good luck uh, with the rest of your season, and we'll hopefully see you in person here come fall. Yeah, man, I hope we get back to it soon. You know, my, my, my gym's got cobwebs all over it. I want to get some wrestlers <laughs> back in there and get to work. All right, Ram Nation, for Ryan Keating, Cameron Irvine, and our special guest, Ray Bedford, this has been another edition of Ramsports.net Ram Talk. Thanks. We'll see you later. <laughs>